while the sacrifices were great, they, they're not made in vain. He's never going to be for, forgotten that we can go there and we can see his name on this wall and, and, know, and people know of the sacrifice that he gave. He'll always be my guardian angel. He will live on and we'll make sure of that. We should have somebody to promise to never forget. Rio, uh, that reminded me up here. I need another unit. Okay, 914, copy. Okay. 45, where are you at? 45, you okay? At some point, Officer McTarian got the driver out of the car. Um, a struggle ensued, at which time the offender pulled a handgun and shot Josh in the head. They got back in their car and they took off. And Josh was left there to die on the, on the side of the road. My husband was killed in a bank robbery. I mean, his partner responded to a bank robbery on the morning of October 21st, 1981. Bank robbers came out shooting. He passed at Brentwood Hospital at 746 that night. Patrolman James Kerstetter, we call him Jimmy, went on a, a neighbor dispute. Jimmy went next door, knocked on the door, was invited into the house, took about three steps into the house and one step up a set of stairs and was shot from the, from the basement up, uh, two rounds up under the vest. The night he was uh, killed, he had responded to a disturbance call, pulled up on the scene to take care of the disturbance. There was a large group. As he was exiting his car, he was shot and killed by a suspect. My brother was um, off duty, but on his way home from work, and um, he saw what he thought was um, a robbery in progress. Being the 24-7 police officer that he was, he stopped to help. What he didn't know at the time was that um, there was a lookout. So when he stepped from his car, um, he was shot in the back of the head. The night before Derek passed, I couldn't sleep. The radio went off, so they had a call around the corner. The police department had actually went to our house and I wasn't there. And they didn't want to tell me on the phone, but I knew and I found out beforehand. So one of the moms rushed me to Metro. And I came in through the emergency room door and I saw this sea of police officers. And it was like the pardon of the sea. They saw me and pardon of the sea. And at the end of the tunnel was the chief and the mayor. He had seen um, some big scrap metal parts laying in the middle of the road. Jared pulled over with his flashing lights on and his, his safety equipment. A van pulled over three lanes and hit Jared. Jason was responding to uh, assist another officer at our local hospital. There was uh, a couple vehicles uh, oncoming, appeared to be stopped. Uh, as he was going past them, one of them was beginning to turn left into the driveway. Jason swerved to avoid colliding with the vehicle and struck a tree on the tree lawn. My husband, Wayne Leon, was killed in the line of duty on June 25th, 2000. He had pulled over a suspicious vehicle at a Sunoco gas station, and as he turned to use his portable, he was shot once in the face at point-blank range. I was a police officer for eight years um, at Oakwood Village. Actually, I had a pursuit one night, and it came here into Toonsburg, and that's how I had met Josh. He, uh, he was a good guy. He's a good guy. My husband was very laid back, very quiet, and he could talk to from the highest to the lowest, very friendly. Um, he's a jokester, and uh, he loved his baby. You have people who like to do the job, and then you have people who are the job. And Jimmy was one of those who, he is the job, or was the job. Jason was a uh, independent young guy who, uh, aggressive policeman, but yet he was a uh, community-minded policeman. He had a lot of friends in the city, uh, but he made a lot of arrests, too. He's the only boy, and f the perfect big brother. He was best dad. I mean, 
his children were, were everything to him. Sydney and Chandler, um, they're very strong. Two very strong kids. They both have great qualities, all of them in which Derek had. They believe he's here and that he's always with them, so I'm okay with that. He's a very good police officer. Uh, all kind words. He did his job well. Yeah, that's for sure. He was uh, energetic in, in enforcement, and you could say aggressive, but then again, uh, he dealt with people well. Even the citizens he came in contact with liked him. Mostly I remember things that I've written down from when I was younger or stories from people that knew my father really well. My mom likes to tell me stories a lot or my uncles and I love hearing those stories. As a survivor, it's, it's a fear of ours that people will move on and they'll forget our loved one and um, what he meant to us. As a chief, I lost an officer and it hurts to lose an officer as a chief, but I lost my friend. You'll hear a song on the radio, or you'll see something that reminds you, and it's the same as if it was yesterday. It doesn't matter how long you've been a survivor, um, they're always there. He's such a big um, part of my life, and I don't want him to be forgotten. In 94 is when I became an active member of the Memorial Society. Prior to James uh, passing, I didn't have any involvement or understanding about what the Memorial Society was. I thought it was cool that there was a, a parade every year. I'm actually embarrassed to say that as an officer I didn't know Memorial Society existed. I didn't become an official member until maybe five or six years ago and you know I've since become a life member because the mission of the organization is to preserve those memories. The Memorial Society, you know, they sent me notices, they sent me information so I knew what was going on. And when they reached out to me about the Great Marker Project, I thought what a great way for me to, to, um, to get involved. When you see what goes into a police officer's funeral, all the planning and the preparation and the amount of officers that attend from all over the country, Without the society behind us, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, they immediately stepped up and assisted our officers, our honor guard, our personnel. After something like this happens and so many people give to you and they're so thoughtful and so kind that you know you want to give back and so this is why I wanted to be a member on the society. I just believe that nobody you know, owes me anything but they just believe they owe us the world. Um, I've gotten involved in the memorial service and, uh, and helping with that, and, and, and it's a wonderful feeling to be able to do that. The Memorial Society works so hard to ensure that every single police officer that has given their life for others is never forgotten. And that's the motto of the Memorial Society is to never forget um, Josh or any of the other fallen officers or injured officers. Their purpose is to, to help you remember. To, to help you so you don't forget and the people you work with don't forget. They keep the promise to, to be there. We're gonna be here. All you gotta do is ride down West 3rd and look at that wall and you know we're there. The first time you see his name on the memorial, it's kind of, um, a big jolt of reality. When you go to the memorial and you see a name on a wall of somebody that you knew personally, uh, it's very touching. Yes, he's gone. Yes, we miss him. But uh, he died doing what he loved to do. The promise is, is that we will never forget these officers. We will never forget their families. We will never forget their colleagues. Uh, we will be there for them uh, when they need us and, and to keep preserving the memory of good people who have made the ultimate sacrifice.